So that's our MATLAB code. First of all, we clear the command window and clear all variables. And we define the parameters. And the time, the time goes from 0 with steps of 0 0.05 to 10 seconds. The angular speed is going to be equal to 2 radians per second and theta is the angular speed times the time. So we have the points P1 and P4. That's the x coordinate and the y coordinate. We have the point P2, which is going to be a matrix because theta is a vector here. We have the distance E. That's a vector too because theta is a vector. We have the angle alpha and beta. Uh, note that we have this point here because this is a, this is a division of a vector by another vector. That's the same case here. That's the multiplication by another vector. So we have to reuse this point for as well as here, this here, and the numerator is a vector, and this here is a vector too. So we have to use this point. P3, which is going to be a matrix. Then we have P3x, that's the position, uh, the, the, the x coordinate of the point 3, as well as this here. So this line here is going to give us the velocity in the x direction. So we use the diff function that calculates the difference of consecutive values of the vector P3 on the line x. So we divide this by diff of t. This is a vector and this is also a vector so we have to put this point here. This is also going to help with the velocity in the y direction. To find the total velocity, we just have to take the square root of this sum here. Pretty simple. So that's the part where we make the animation. First of all, we have to define a subplot. subplot. We just need two subplots, one for the animation the other for the plot of the velocity of point P3 and we begin by drawing some cycles these cycles represent the point from 1 to 4 this function here draws a cycle centered at this point with this radius here uh, P2 is actually a matrix so we have to define at which instant of time as well as P3. So now we are going to draw the lines that represents the bars that can be done with the function line. It goes from the point P1, that's the x coordinate of P1, and the y coordinate of P1 to the x coordinate of P2 and the y coordinate of P3. So we have to define for P2 and P3 the instant of time, always. Now we just choose the limits for, for the subplots. And in this line here, uh, I'm going to create a string called P3. And this string is going to be located right above the point P3. The string 2 contains the time elapsed and the conversion from numerical value to string value of the time and another string which was just a space and an S. So this line here creates uh, the text containing the string 1 which is the point P3 and it's going to be located at this x coordinate and this y coordinate. That's 
for the time also, so all very simple. Now we give a, a command of pause so that we can actually see what's happening inside this loop. Otherwise, we would just see the final result. So if i is less than the length of t, that means that if it's not the final, the final loop, then we delete all the objects that we have created and we plot the velocity, the velocity of the point P3. So we define a new subplot, the second one, and we plot in this subplot T from 1 to I and P3 on the line V from 1 to I. That's going to be an animation, an animated line. So here we set the, the limits and we define the levels of the X coordinate and Y coordinate. And finally the time, the title. So now let's see the final result. Let's run the code. Let's see what happens if we change the four five. So we can see that the maximum velocity of the point P3 actually is lower than it was before. So that's it.